Would you join me at reading the opening prayer this morning on page four? We will read the first prayer. Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless from the deceitful and the cunning. Rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen of powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland. For my chosen people to drink, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Our song response, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord, the Lord has, has done, done great, great things for us. us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord, the Lord has, has done, done great, great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord, the Lord has, has done, done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. 
For his sake I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes from faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, it is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies be behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead. I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's award calling in Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. Praise to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, word of God. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. Praise to you, Lord God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. saying it takes two to tango. So where is her dance partner? And I say that because we have little ears present. Okay. The first 
witnesses to this action. Either they allowed the dance partner to skedaddle, and he'll always be an anonymous figure, or they fulfilled the law of Moses from Leviticus and Deuteronomy, and the dance partner was already stoned. So we have two options. But it, the Gospel writer never reflects upon this mysterious figure, yet he portrays the other dance partner, the woman, an unnamed woman, who is placed in a very particular position. Now, in my prayer this week, I, I thought a lot about it, and I went back to an old way of praying called Lectio Divina, in which, to a certain degree, you use your imagination. You literally put yourself in the scene that you're reading about, and you think about it, and you imagine, okay, I know the scene, I, I, I know what's happening by what I've read, but in my mind, what do I see? What do I feel? What do I taste? What do I smell? What do I hear? And I allow the fullness of the scene to really draw me in and say, okay, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to learn from this moment? And as I did that, I found myself in my own prayer, and I offer this to you, for you to, to take and think about it later. But in my mind, as I was there amongst the crowd, I could see this poor uh, woman being pushed, prodded, pulled, dragged, whatever word you want to use. I think they're all appropriate. But she's brought up into the front. Now, she's guilty. She was caught in the act. So there's no way she's getting out of it. And I can, in my mind, just see her standing there, probably trembling. She knows her life is forfeit. There's nothing she can do. She can't run and escape. She's surrounded. Uh, probably the guilt and the shame are like uh, manacles that are holding her in place. She is not going anywhere. And in my prayer, I could never see her at any time in this first part of this passage ever lifting up her eyes. I'm sure her head and her eyes are cast down as low as they can. But yet at the same time, I'm sure she noticed she is led in front of some somewhat odd-looking figure who's just in front of her kneeling, doodling on the sand. I say doodling, writing, drawing. We don't know what he wrote, Jesus. We can only speculate. But he's there on the sand in front of her. She's probably, because uh, I know I think we've all experienced it, when you have a traumatic event, you kind of go into shock. She probably doesn't know exactly what's going on. She's probably, her head is clouded with thoughts, regrets. She's seeing her life pass in front of her eyes. All her loved ones. And yet, she notices the man stands in, up right in front of her. She hears him say something. She's probably not going to comprehend what he's saying. It's not registering. Then he goes back and he kneels down. And eventually, what probably seemed like an eternity to her, he stands back up again and kind of shakes her out of that doldrums by asking her a question. Woman, is there anyone here to condemn you? And in my mind, I saw that's probably the first time she looked up from the moment she was brought there. 
And to her amazement, as she's kind of coming out of that stupor of the moment, she probably started to realize, my gosh, there's nobody here. Where did it, where'd they all go? And then that's when she responds, no, sir, no one's here. And I'm sure Jesus <coughs> confused her even further when he said to her, well, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And in my mind, he probably just walked off, went back to do something else. And she's alone standing there, probably totally confused, wondering, who is this person? Because we can read in other passages of the New Testament where even those around Jesus were not really 100% sure who he was, if he was the Messiah or not. And she's probably heard of a Jesus of Nazareth by reputation or rumor. Now that she stands in front of him, she's thinking to herself, I'm sure, who is he? Because he just did something that was impossible. He has given me back my life that I forfeited by my actions. And in all of that, God bless you, and in all of that prayer, all of a sudden, it hit me. I'm that woman. I think we all are. Not in that particular sin, but we all have sinned. We all stand accused by our own choices, our own sinful pride. And we stand in front of Jesus who is wanting very much to forgive us. He is waiting for us to say we're sorry. And he is encouraging us with words, either those spoken in our mind and in our heart, in audible words, those that we hear from family, from friends, who encourage us to have that deeper relationship, to ask and seek forgiveness. He is there wanting us, waiting for us to forgive, to ask for forgiveness. But do we really want it? And that was the question that I was left to ponder. As much as Jesus wants to forgive me, you, do I want to be forgiven? Because to be forgiven means I must take seriously that portion of the act of contrition which says, I resolve to sin no more to avoid the near occasion of sin. Do I really want to commit to that? How often have I, have any of us, gone to confession and a week, two weeks, a month, six months, a year, we go back. It doesn't matter the time. But we go back and we find ourselves saying, well, Father, I'm here to confess the same things. I think so often it's because we like those sinful things. We enjoy those sinful things. And the devil knows that and he tempts us with that. I'll tell you a story. Growing up as a young boy, my grandmother, God bless her soul, uh, now deceased. She knew I loved liver and onions. Always have. But for some odd reason, she got in her mind that I liked navy beans, which I hate, I despise. Okay? Oh, God, they're terrible. But to get me to come over to eat the navy beans, she would make liver and onions. My love of liver and onions, I know I'm odd, did you? That love was so strong, I could look past the thing that I detested. 
And that's how it is sometimes with sin. The devil knows exactly what we love. He tempts us with that. He's not going to tempt us with something we don't like. Why? That fails. I'll never fall for the temptation to eat all the navy beans I want. Okay? <laughs> never going to happen. But on things that I love, I enjoy. Will I fall for those temptations? Yes. The devil knows that. But to commit, to say to God, Lord, I resolve. I ask your forgiveness and I resolve to sin no more. I resolve to avoid that which leads me to sin. Am I truly deep down in my heart wanting to make that commitment? That's the question I leave for all of us to ponder today. Because I don't think I can give you a standard answer. That's something that we all must work out in our own mind and heart. May Almighty God be with you. May He bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us stand now for our profession of faith, our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. He got him not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us made him for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He has ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. For the whole Christian people, that in this sacred time, they may be more abundantly nourished for every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that in lasting tranquility and peace, our days may truly become that acceptable time of grace and salvation. Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For sinners and neglectful, that in this time of reconciliation, they might return to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that God may at last stir up in our hearts a version for our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our community, both here, present, and those watching on video, who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, going through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the names in our book this morning, for Joyce Lumpkin and family, Lisa Phillips, Frank Coe, family 
and Dave Butte, Edna Adcock and Maureen Cassell, Brooks family, Gus Lynn, Mary Beth Squires, Beverly Baker, Isabel Devine, Edith Piot, Jerry Lucas, a special intention for the repose of the soul of Bill Adcock, Richard and Nancy Donaldson, and special intention, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Claire Andrews, for whom this Mass is being offered this morning, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with a prayer of praise and honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Bless are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be Bless are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord Jesus sacrifice Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabato, Plaini Suncele et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus qui Veni, in nomine Domini, Hosanna in Excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Join me in reading the communion chant on page 36. Has no one condemned you, woman? No one, Lord, neither shall I condemn you, for now I sin no more.
We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater, et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Ite misa est. Deo gracias. Please be seated. At this time, our ushers will take up our second collection for our building and maintenance fund, since this is the first weekend in the month. Thank you for your generosity. And as they take up that collection, just a reminder, this week on Tuesday, we have the television mass that we filmed for the Archdiocese. Wednesday, we have Parish Council. Friday, we have the Kraken uh, food truck for our Lenten meal. And then next Sunday, we have the Easter egg hunt. So it's going to be a busy week as we're getting closer to Easter. Okay. Now, also in your bulletin, you will notice this card that's in there. Uh, the parishes on our side of the Mobile Bay are all coming together and they would like to have a perpetual adoration chapel. And they would like to do this, God bless you, at St. Ignatius Parish. If you would like to go and be a part of that, you just need to fill this out and drop it off to me. Okay? All right. I think that should cover it. Y'all have a very blessed day today. You too. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Prayer to St. Michael for our parish families. Holy Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praises, protection against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, your God, your man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus, the most unhappy of the Blessed be the Holy Spirit, your most